good afternoon. I almost said evening, but I guess it's still technically afternoon-ish. I don't know. What time do you consider evening? I, I don't know. But anyway, my name is Matt Williams, and you're watching Married in College Esports. So in a matter of moments, we are going to have our Overwatch team go up against Florida Polytechnic University. Now, the Pioneers did play against them last semester in Collegiate R6, but this is a completely different team than who we played uh, in the previous season. I think last semester it was their B team, and now we're playing their A team, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. So right now I'm just waiting for things to get set up in the lobby. So while we're waiting for that, let's take a look at the roster for our Rainbow Six team. So we have, playing for today, our captain, uh, sophomore Vincent Anderson, Large Nuggo, although I believe he did change his name to Nuggo. So we're probably just going to keep going to call him Nuggo. We have sophomore Alex Meyer, Sith Jedi, sophomore Dylan Poles, Rez, junior Bobby Web Weber, Boba Flex 7, freshman Aaron Crumb Spoon, and freshman Julius Tapia, Juju Tap. Now, of those six, I don't know which five are playing. Uh, uh, Chris Brimby, Donnie Waters will not be uh, playing tonight. I believe uh, Justify was uh, doing stuff with football. And I think they won. So congratulations to our football team for winning today. I know they've been waiting a very long time to uh, get back onto the field. So we're very happy for them here that uh, they're able to get a, a win there. But anyway, uh, while we are... Uh, getting things set up and just double check a couple things here on discord uh, let's go over a couple of announcements so we said this earlier and i'm going to mention again we still have our team shop set up uh, thanks to bsn sports so we have t-shirts we have backpacks we have hoodies we have hats apparently we're out of the gym sacks i'm sorry i guess that's sold out but we have all sorts of esports swag. So if you want to get one of those, now is the time to place your order, folks. Because March 15th is just a couple of days, and that is the last day the store will be available. So if you want to make a purchase, you would go to bit.ly slash mcbsn2021. Now, we also have our jerseys. You see a little picture there. In fact, I'm going to swap to the camera again just to show you this This. Uh, in real life or what this looks like. So here is our Marion College Esports jersey. You can get your own custom name in the back. So you can get your very own one of those uh, by going to our Steam source. Let me go back to the link there. It is bit.ly slash mcjersey2021. Uh, it, we had to set up as a separate store because it's kind of done through a, a vendor outside of BSN. Um, but yeah, I think the jerseys are like $37, which compared to prices of normal jerseys elsewhere i think that's a really good deal esports jerseys for other teams could be anywhere from like 50 to 60 bucks so yeah it's like 37 dollars a jersey plus shipping i mean of course no one wants to pay for shipping but uh it's a very reasonable price plus the shirts and the hoodies and everything i think those are reasonable prices as well you get a a, a shirt for like 20 bucks or a hoodie for less than 30 where most places are like 40 to 50 bucks it's a i think it's a pretty good deal in my opinion I ordered a couple things myself because um, I thought they were really nice. Uh, we have variations of our esports logo. What we did was we took a poll and uh, with our players of different variations, and uh, we selected the the top two that were chosen. So these were the uh, the logos that uh, our students really liked the most. So you can definitely check that out. Uh, if you get one of the backpacks or the hats, uh, it's actually an embroidered uh, logo. So it's just it's. It's a really nice stuff here. And a portion of each sale does go directly back into the esports program. So I do recommend checking that out. Um, as so a couple other announcements, I'm gonna leave the links up here just so you can see it. Uh, as for match schedules, so we are approaching the end of the regular season in the Great Lakes Esports Conference. So playoffs are gonna be coming up soon. I believe that will start on March 27th. So we might not have any matches to broadcast this coming Saturday. But we may still have some other things going on. Rainbow Six is going to be playing. Um, we may try to broadcast a, a tournament that our Overwatch team has been participating in. So we'll just kind of how, see how things are going. So I would highly recommend that you go follow us on social media. So if you're not following us on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, this will be the time to do that right now. So you can, on here on Twitch, you can hit that follow button, that like button. Right now, it looks like we're at 399 followers. Will you 
be that 400th follower. That would be awesome to actually have 400 followers on our Twitch channel. That would be absolutely amazing. Uh, but you can also follow us on Twitter at Married Esports or Facebook.com slash Married Esports, Instagram.com slash Married Esports. We also have our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash Married Esports. Uh, so all of our past broadcasts uh, will be on there, be up on there. So if you missed our earlier matches, uh, it will be up later on next week. So definitely hit that subscribe button over there. So that way when it comes out, you are aware of it and you can go check it out. All right, so it looks like the lobby is getting set up, and I have been told uh, that for this best of three series, the first map will be Clubhouse with Marietta attacking, the second map will be Villa with Marietta defending, and then if we go to a game three, that will be Oregon, and we don't know who will be attacking and defending yet. There's been some changes with round differentials, so that's kind of why, um, kind of why I don't know who's going to be attacking and defending just yet. Now, uh, as a reminder, with Rainbow Six, with every broadcast, I mention two things. First, I have no idea what I'm talking about. So, keep that in mind. I'll do the best I can, but we're just here for commentary, have a good time, and cheer on our pioneers as they take on their opponent. That's the first thing. Second thing, we are going to be watching this from a couple players' perspectives. There is a spectator mode, but according under Collegiate R6 rules, you are not allowed to spectate the whole game. If you are in the same building as any of your players. Well, I have three of my players playing in the, the room right next to me. And so under Collegiate R6 rules, I cannot spectate from here. But we do have NDI set up where I can see uh, some of the screens from some of the players. And that will allow me to see specifically from Sith Jedi and Juju Tap's uh, perspective. Looks like Nuggo, Sith Jedi, Spoon... Juju Tap and Boba Flex uh, will be playing in this first game. It does not look like Rez uh, will be playing. So we're going to try to alternate between watching Juju Taps and Sith Jedi's perspective from here. Um, I wish we could show that the whole view of the match. That would be awesome. But we, we need to follow Collegiate R6 rules. We don't want to get in trouble with them. So we're going to try to make this as fair as possible. But okay, everyone is in the lobby so once we get to the ban phase we will get that uh to you so while we're waiting this you can still go to our, our team store there bit.ly slash mcbsn2021 or bit.ly slash mcjersey2021 uh while we are uh, waiting for that uh also as a reminder uh we are always looking for players for our esports program if you are married at a college student you're welcome to come see me talk to me because uh, right now we have teams in League of Legends, Overwatch, Rocket League, and of course, Rainbow Six Siege. But we are also looking to forming maybe some new teams for the fall, such as Valorant and Hearthstone. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a Hearthstone team up and running in the fall. And I know there are five or more people who play Valorant. So I think that's going to be a, a possibility as well. And maybe we'll start some other teams. Maybe we'll start a FIFA team. Maybe we'll start a Madden team. Maybe we'll bring back the CSGO team. Who knows? But if you are interested, then please talk to me. We'd love to get things set up, and maybe we can get some practices in over the summer. If you are a high school senior, then I got some news for you. Did you know that you can get a scholarship for coming to Marietta College for esports? That's right. It's a three-step process. So the first step is to go to bit.ly slash mcrecruit. Fill out recruitment form. You can, the QR code is right on your screen right now. I would say take a screenshot of this, so that way you have the QR codes. Step two would be to apply for admission, marianna.edu slash apply. Uh, and then step three would be to schedule a tryout. Now, the graphic here is a little out of date um, because it's past March 6th. But we do have a couple other tryout dates later on. Uh, we do have um, in-person tryouts uh, in a couple weeks. And we'll also have some tryouts on April 10th. So you can go to bit.ly slash mcesport tryout. And the game is starting up. So let me get over there real quickly. Hold on. There, there we go. I'm, tr I'm trying to get the audio here working. All right. Here we go. So, game one. We are at Clubhouse. Uh, Barry is going to be attacking first. And Florida Polytechnic will be uh, defending. And a shout out to our very own Rez for subscribing using Prime Gaming. Thank you so much for that subscription. Which, by the way, if you have... If, Okay, let's talk about bans here. So Thatcher's going to be banned. That's going to be a, a given. 
of course, increase the audio here a little bit so we can hear. Uh, we're going to see Marion is going to ban out the Maverick. And we'll see what Marion's next ban is going to be. They are hovering over that Kaid, which makes sense just to... They don't want the uh, that electrified wall. Just don't have to worry about bandit for it. But yeah, the Kaid will be banned by Marietta, and then we'll see what the last ban will be for uh, Florida Polytechnic. So waiting for their pick. All right, here we go. And it will be the Mira that will be banned, which, of course, it's going to be Mira. We don't want that big, giant window in the way. I've seen her banned so many times. But anyway, going back to shout out to Rez with that Prime Gaming sub. So don't forget, if you have Amazon Prime, and if you have Amazon Prime, you may or may not know, but there is this thing called Prime Gaming. It used to be called Twitch Prime, and you can use your Prime Gaming subscription to get a free sub every month. Okay, I really should talk about the game here, but then I'll talk about Prime Gaming. So it looks like we're just gonna go with the Twitch, Sophia, uh, the Ace, the Havana, and the Nomad. Uh, right now, we are looking at this from Jujutap's perspective, so we are gonna be watching the Havana and seeing how that goes. But anyway, as I was saying, if you have Amazon Prime, then there is a thing called Prime Gaming with Twitch, where if you create a free Twitch account, you can link it to your Amazon Prime account and get Prime Gaming. That gives you all sorts of in-game goodies for a variety of games you play, including Rainbow Six Siege. But it also gives you a free sub that you can use every month to a Twitch channel of your choice. Which means you could use a Prime Gaming sub to Marietta Esports, and that would be a sub that gives revenue for us, and it doesn't cost you a thing. It's free money. That's all it is. But the only catch is you have to remember to do this every month because it does not automatically renew, unlike a traditional Twitch sub. But all right, there's my shameless plug for now. I'm sure I'll have more later on. So thank you once again for your support. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of the drone phase. He's not really doing a whole lot here. Not too sure what he was doing during that, but that's okay. Maybe taking out the cameras. Oh, we don't get any spawn peaks. Check for spawn peaks. No one's over there looking for the spawn peak. Still checking. Does not see anyone over there. He's going to be working away. Let's play around. Although there is some gunfire, so he does know someone's there. So it's looking like the bomb is probably at Jin bedroom. So he's going to be working his way into the garage, it looks like. All sorts of gunfire. And Goku Rocks is going to take out Spoon. He will take his drone back. And work his way up. With one down from Marietta, it will slow their progress. He's just going to check. CCTV to see if anyone's there. No one's going to be there, so he's going to try to work his way in. The Boba has worked his way in, or at least got the throw in. Goodbye. Which is just, by the way, it's going to just peek over to see if anyone's there. Doesn't look like anyone's there. He's going to be breaching the wall. He went over there. It looked like it. No one's by the... No one's there. There it is. One minute remaining. They haven't taken down anyone. They're going to have to be careful. One of the problems they have on offense is it just takes too long to work their way in. And next thing you know, it's going to be like, oh, it's 10 seconds. you got to run in. And they don't want that happening again. Juju does use the drone and catches someone off in that corner. So he's going to try to breach through. 
Smoke's gonna be coming out. But now Marion has 35 seconds to do will rotate around and try to breach the next wall. But now he'll rotate again, just using it as kind of a decoy. But now Marion only has 20 seconds and they gotta get, make a move. Oh wait, is it like a TV? This is not like Jim. Overflux does end up going down. Juju's gonna be trying to find picks, but every one of the pioneers is going down. Even Juju has fallen, so I think there's only one left for Mary. Actually, no, they all have been eliminated. Never mind. Yeah, so that's another one of those where they're just running out of time and. Okay, yeah, so the bomb apparently was by CCTV, so they're just kind of working their way around the back, and, it, and that plan didn't go as. Uh, as hoped. So now this could be gym bedroom instead of CCTV since it was there before. All right, so we're gonna swap over to uh, Sith Jedi's perspective. That is not Sith Jedi's perspective. Let's try that again. I was not trying to throw in a shameless plug for you to go to our team store at bit.ly slash mcbsn2021 or, or bit.ly slash mcjersey2021, not at all. Anyway, now we're going to be looking from Sith Jedi's perspective, and it looks like he's going to be playing the buck this time. Uh, Marion did use their sixth prick to bring out the IQ. So, I mean, we've got a couple of breachers there, so maybe the problem before was just trying to breach in, but... Looks like Sith Jedi lost one of his drones early on. Or no, never mind. He's, he's got one. Actually, no, that's Spoon's... No, yeah, he lost his... Uh... Yep, he lost his uh, his drone. So he's just checking out everyone else's drones. Bobaflex is getting some info. Ten so it looks like the bomb's going to be at Church Arsenal if they're fortifying that back door. You must locate and a bomb. All right, so we just take out cameras. Got to watch for that early... Early spawn peaks happen a lot with Church Arsenal, but they just have to watch it so they don't get picked off. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Either Jedi's going to drone in just to make sure it's safe. Doesn't see anyone by the stairs, but he's gonna work his way down here. We check on the floor, see if anyone's underneath him. I see anyone there, but we do hear some gunfire. Doesn't look like Barry is taking any damage from it. Jedi's gonna prone just to see if he can get a better angle. There's the bomb, which I mean, of course, he's church arsenal. What do we expect? Just trying to get that high ground advantage, but not going to spot anyone. They're going to have to work their way down. They got a bit, uh, about a minute and a half to go. And there are some gunshots. Reload. Takes out the Nitro, which almost took out him and Juju. So a clutch play. Spoon is going to fall to Roy Gwyn. Washman goes out. And Juju does take down one, but Juju is going to fall to Goku Rocks, but Sinchai does take out Goku Rocks, so it's a 1 for 1 trade there, but Marion is still down by one. Bulba does take down Nye and Orange. So that might be Marion's Mary Mary opportunity to move in. They got 45 seconds. A spot the razor wire has to be careful not to make too much noise when he drops in. I didn't see anyone, and I don't think he doesn't have any drones to check there. But well, he does have the one by the stairs, but he doesn't have any drone with him to check if anyone's down there. Jumping down would be very risky, but only 25 seconds left. He's gonna throw a couple flashbangs and use that to hop in. 
has been spotted. So he's going to take that one, and Nuggles going to take another, and Marietta will take the round. Comes in with the Nomad, takes out the last guy as Sith Jedi was taking out uh, the other person. So now it is one round apiece. Increase the audio just a little bit so we can hear what's going on. All right, so let's swap over to uh, Juju Tap's perspective. He's going to be bringing out the Ash this time. Sith Jedi is going to stay on the Buck. Uh, meanwhile, Spoon will be on Habana, Nug will be on Nomad, and Boom Flex will be on the Ace. If there are any six picks, it does not look like there'll be a sixth pick. Right, Juju's once again not anything with the drones i don't know why sure let's just check over it Wait, that's one but okay now he's starting to move the drones i was going to check over with sith jedi to see what he's doing with drones if no oh, just not doing much let's see what uh the jedi's doing with that drone of his all right so he's uh trying to get up to the top of that uh shelf there i don't think he's gonna make it i think he's just got to leave it on that copier Five seconds. Yeah, that's all he's gonna be able to do. All right, so we're gonna go back to uh, Juju Tap's perspective. It actually, does leave a drone over by garage. Actually, that's not garage. I didn't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I think I, I did get the disclaimer that I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to Rainbow Six. Okay, so we're going by the gym, nothing there. So I don't think they can go back to CCTV. So this might be might be Torch Arsenal again. Hear some gunshots. No one from Marietta has taken it. But Juju is going to catch one. I'm going to rotate back up because that's going to draw attention. And it looks like Sitchell is opening up something to Juju's left. I can hear it. And I shoot some holes. To see if they can. He can catch anyone there. Goku Rocks is going to take down Boba Flex, though. So it is a 4v4. Oh, that's right. So he's was just checking to see if there's anyone underneath him. I'm just going to check this one. He takes out the device there. Flashbang. I'm in trouble with that device. So. Area that has about a minute remaining. 4v4. And Sitchai is going to take down Drassic. They may be looking for more. Let's yeah, work this way. Dude, the for it. Although this guy is going to fall, and so will Juju. Ambrose does get him from behind. And actually gets a double kill there, taking out Nuggo. So Spoon is the only one that's left. Takes some hits. He is down to about half health. 30 seconds remaining. He's going to get down to Goku Rocks. And Florida Polytechnic will take the round. So Florida Polytechnic is up by one round though, but it's still very early in this uh, game. It is a first to seven. It looks like we're gonna see the Twitch, Sophia, Habana, Ace, and Nomad, but Juju may be considered a saint. No, he's gonna confirm the, the Nomad, but we're gonna swap over to Sith Jedi anyway. 
watch the match from his perspective now. We'll see him on the Zofia. Oh no, Spoon's going to be using 6 pick and bringing out the Ash. He's out getting some information. Gun. The fuser is no longer in your possession. And I think I believe it is gonna be CCTV this time. seen one from Mary has fallen but said Jedi has fallen as well not to start Mary needs bubble flex does get down one though but it's still a 3v4 in Florida Polytechnic's favor Getting into the, uh, the building. Spoon is just checking the top to see if anyone is there. Elder's going to be checking his drone. No one's by the office. By the gym. They only got a minute left, so they're they're eating up so much of the clock right now. Hey, Logo's over there, so he's not using the drone, but Oga and Boba Flex and Spoon are working their way in. Right now, Juju's just checking Boba Flex's uh, drone. Bomb has been located. I'm getting a lot of info, though. Check uh, Juju's perspective. See if there's. They're checking the. Uh... Okay, so we can see the see from the other players. And we're seeing that uh, Nogo did take some damage. Spoon did take down Roy Blade. There is exchange of gunfire. Smoke is out. Five seconds remaining though. Bubba Flex is down. And Nogo's trying to plant. And he gets taken out at the last second. That was unfortunate. Now for opponent that gets up by two rounds. But Marietta really needs to try to get this one. We are getting close to the the roll swap. So if Marietta can kind of hang on, they feel very comfortable playing defensively. So I think if they don't get too far behind, then they can make it up when they play defensively. We're going to see Judy type on the sledge this time. Boflex will stay on the A, Snuggle will be on the Nomad, Sit Jedi bringing out the Ash, and Spoon will be on the Twitch. 
Those ops have been confirmed. It's about to begin. But this one is most likely it is going to be in bedroom, I would think. Just looking always up. But he's gonna take get taken out early by Goku Rocks. I don't know how he saw or heard that. But that is not the start that Marietta needs. We'll swap over to Sith Jai's perspective since he's still up. to see if there's anyone right there. Oh, no, never mind. There is someone there. And he's going to get drawn out by the drone, but Boba Flex is actually going to go down. They, they try to get him out, but... Yeah, that was unfortunate. And Newt is going to be jamming that signal if it gets too far. But Sajai is going to try to move in. Room not going to be there. He is going to find one, so he does take down one, takes down the uh, whatever that device was. I was going to be rotating around. But a minute 10 remains in the round. You have located your bomb, but you must recover the Jedi ends up falling to Goku Rocks. Goku Rocks has been playing very well in this match so far. Naga does take him out though, but it is a 3v2 in Florida's uh, favor. Nogo is going to see. Throws out the flashbang. This might be a chance to move in, but. Going to get anyone from that. 35 seconds remains. It has got to move in. And Nogo is going to fall, so it's just Spoon. That's all that's left. Spoon will fall. Four eliminated all friendly. The Florida Polytechnic will take the round. The Roy Green being able to get him from underneath. So it is one to four. Marietta does need to get this round here. If, if Maria can at least take another round, then that would, I don't want to say give them an advantage, but it does help because otherwise uh, Florida Polytechnic would only need two rounds to win the game once they swap to offense. So this next one's most like, I believe it would be Church Arsenal that does has opened up. You need to use your drone to locate a bomb. And Maria should be prepared for this. Actually, no, maybe it's... I, I lost track now. Is it CCTV or is it... I can't remember if it's CCTV or Church Arsenal at this point. I guess we'll find out.
So we are watching this from Sith Jedi's perspective. We putting the drone over by that copier. Insertion in five seconds. A bomb must be located and defused. Be used. Yeah, it's it's definitely to do it. Should be working its way up. Okay, no go, no go drops down. We'll work on that top hatch again. We're just gonna check to see if anyone is there. So we can drop in. And he does catch one. It does hit him. Doesn't finish him off, but he does catch him. Drowsy does take down Spoon, though. Minute 35. Right, it's down one, but Nugo and Sinchita are heading their way. I'm sorry, that's Juju Tap, not Nugo. I have to stay. Let's hear gunfire. Nugo does take down one. And Sinchita will fall. Actually, maybe it was Church Arsenal. I don't know anymore. Where's the bomb? It's gotta be Church Arsenal. All right, we're gonna swap over to not that perspective. And Juju Tap is gonna fall. Nago is already very low. It's just Nago and Boba Flex. It's all that's left. 55 seconds remain. They gotta take down four of Florida Polytechnic, which is gonna be very difficult to do. But Nago, no, I'm sorry, Boba gets one. Boba gets two. And he is pinned down. That's pre-fire. Throws out the grenade. But Nuggo gets Left picked off. off. So Bobo is the only one that's left. He's got to take down two. He takes down his third. Can he find a fourth? He does not, unfortunately. Drasset will finish him off. Oh, that was so close. He took down three. But Drasset was able to catch him. So now the rolls will swap. Uh, so Merida will be on defense, but the problem once again though is that Florida Polytechnic only needs two rounds to win game one. But we will see uh, how Merida will adjust. We're going to swap over to Juju Tap's perspective for this one. He's going to be playing the Valkyrie. We're going to see the Mute, the Smoke, Jaeger, and Bandit. We're going to see some interesting choices from Polytechnic. We're going to see the Finca, the Jackal, um, Capital is coming up. And actually Spoon was going to play Bandit, but he's going to swap over to Castle instead. But they are still going to keep the CCTV hash site. Gun. Oh, 
Mercy and Spoon has taken some damage already at less than half health, which is a little bit concerning. But Boba does take down Drazza, but Goku Rocks will take down Boba, so it's a one for one with a headshot. There, if that catches anyone, Minute remains. Marietta is holding, but once again, Spoon is uh, is looking a little rough. And Juju is going to go down, but Doug is going to take down Goku Rock. So it's another three for three. Spoon is going to try to hold. Thirty-five seconds remains in the round. Can Marietta hold? The gas is going to become up on Nugget, but he's going to fall. So now it's just two left for the Pioneers. It's just Sith Jedi and Spoon. Spoon's gonna fall, now it's just Sith Jedi. The Fuser has been playing it, so it's gonna be up to Sith Jedi to make the play. He takes down one, he's not able to take down the second though. We are at map point for Florida Polytechnic. We will swap over to Sith Jedi's perspective for this one. Uh, so we're seeing Juju Tap is going to bring out the Jaeger, and Sith Jedi is going to bring out the Legion this time. So the, yeah, they're doing Church Arsenal. Who's going to go with the castle? Actually, no. Juju is going to swap to the Mute at the last second. That will be a Maestro, and Boba Plex will be a Wamai. Secure the bombs. All right, so this is a critical round for Marietta. Why? Okay, using the grenade to open that up. Well, all right, I, I, I guess. I would think it's just better to shoot the wall instead of blowing up with one of your grenades, but oh, okay. Just getting everything fortified. Can the pioneers hold? Throwing out some canisters. Doorway secure. It's gonna catch one. Does get a hit off of them? Peace will protect us. Holding that permit. Anyone comes by the stairs. And he does take down one. And we'll throw out the canister there. But Juju Tap is going to fall, so it ends up being a one for one trade. Goku Rocks, as I said before, has been playing very well. He's the main threat for Marietta. If they can take him out, uh, then they have a good shot of taking the round. But that is going to be the challenge.
We're at about minute 15. Before there is for another canister will go out. Op four found a bomb. You must defend it. Located a bomb. Everybody does end up falling to Goku Rocks. But Bubba Flex takes down Drazo, so it's another one for one trade. 30 seconds remains in the round. Marietta needs to hold this next 30 seconds. Can they do it? Jedi is firing, thinking this one's there. I don't know if he got anyone got hurt and hit from that. Gunfire Spoon does take down Ambrose uh, and Goku Rocks. And there's only one person left from Florida Polytechnic, and Boba Flex gets the kill. So Marietta is still alive in this game. Do you believe in comebacks, folks? I believe. We're still at match point, but Marietta did take a round, so it is not over yet. So we're going to see Jaeger, Smoke, Mute, Bandit, Castle coming out. Six pick actually could be the Malusi. She was not banned. And she's very annoying to play against. All right, let's watch, swap over to Juju Tap real quick to see the uh, this round from his perspective. Since we were talking about the Malusi, let's see her in action, folks. Just heading to the bar to see if anyone's over there. Such so does take down Goku Rock. That is huge for Marietta. Goku Rock is their best player. Such so will take down Ambrose as well. So that's two down already for Fuller Polytechnic. swap over to his perspective since he's gotten two down although he has taken some hits as a result so he is almost dead but we'll see if he catches a third About a minute left. So he's gonna peek around. Although he's gonna be careful. Bolduflex does take out Nine Orange. 
but he's going to take some hits from that too. But it is now five to two. Here's the gunfire. 35 seconds remains in the round. There's the smoke. There's the flashbang. Another flashbang coming out. Smooth does take down one. So there's only one left for Florida Polytechnic. He's been spotted, and Nuggo is going to get the final frag. So Mariana takes that one without losing a single person, might I add. So, once again, folks, are you a believer? I am a believer, folks. Mariana is slowly working their way back. They just need to take the next round and the next round and the next round without losing one. But we're seeing it happening. But this time Spoon's going to be on the Valkyrie. Juju Tap will be on the Maluzi. And we're going to see the Mute, the Castle, and the Jaeger. No, Spoon's going to actually bring out the... The... What? Or is he going to keep the Valkyrie? Oh, he's going to bring out the one line. Alright, so let's go back to... The Maluzi. There we go. Marina still has their work cut off for them. They cannot lose a single round, otherwise Florida Polytechnic will take the first game. Check the garage, see if anyone's coming in. Doesn't see any drones or anything. Quiet over here. Oh, now we hear some explosions, but it's others at the building. There is the gunfire, so it's gonna first take over. Well, was gonna take down Ambrose. Someone there. Give him a quick one shot. The drone's gonna catch him. Kind of pinned down at this point. He may try to rotate around. It looks like. Something that back window, but a nice headshot there by Juju Tap. And Sid Jai is going to take down Goku Rocks. There's only two left for Fleur Polytechnic, 45 seconds remaining in the round. Sid Jai is going to fall though. His spot should be revealed by. I'll sit down. 
and re-barricade that wall. 20 seconds remain in the round. Looks going to come out. Five seconds remain. Gonna do some free firing. Who's going to take out one? No, who's going to take out the other? And that's going to be the round, folks. As I said before, are you a believer? I'm a believer. It is now four to six. Mariana is working their way up. We're going to see Castle Legion Maestro while I am mute for Marietta. Looks like Lord Pontiac will bring out the Gridlock. Grid, grid and the Jackal. Interesting choices. All right, so we're going to swap over to Sith Jedi's perspective for this one. Secure the area. Keep the bombs protected. But we were still at the same predicament. Marietta has to win this round to stay alive. If Florida Polytechnic takes the round, they will take map one. But Marietta has been able to hold so far. But can they continue to do that, especially at Trust Arsenal? Acting sometimes. Wall reinforced! Shout outs to all the video game voice actors out there. We're hearing some early gunfire. No one's at least no one from Marietta is taking any hits. I think it's just opening up some holes and they can spot where everyone is. At least that's my head cannon. Here it is. And you get a breach for Florida Polytechnic. And I'm just gonna check to see if anyone's gonna be jumping down. There's out another canister. Uh, a minute left in the round. I haven't seen a whole lot of action. The Florida Polytechnic has taken their time. But now we're starting to hear some gunfire. The guy's just holding that spot pretty well, just making sure no one gets by there. Uh, we would expect Florida Polytechnic to make a move. And there they go. They do take out Nuggo. Careful, there are 30, 35 seconds remaining in the round. They have to hold this, otherwise, Florida Polytechnic will win this uh, first game. They do have the person advantage. There are gunshots fired. And Spoon is knocked down. Smoke's going to get triggered. 15 seconds left. Smoke's getting triggered left and right. Spoon ends up falling. Boba Flex does take down one. Graza takes down two, uh, 
his own teammate and Oda. And deaths are going left and right. Bomb is being planted. The diffuser is being planted. Stitch on it has to find the person. Does plant the diffuser. He takes down one, but he's got to find the others. And he's going to get taken down from behind by Ambrose. That is unfortunate. The Florida Polytechnic will take the first map. And you hate to see that happen. Yeah, so with that, Boba has uh, 11 frags. Sith Jedi had 9 frags. Spoon with 6. And I couldn't see the rest because it went back to the, the main screen here. All right, uh, this is a best of three series though. Next map will be Villa, and I believe Marietta will be defending first. So what we'll do is we'll take a small break, and uh, yeah, Marietta's gonna be swapping rocks. Looks like Rez is gonna be coming in, uh, so we should be getting started real soon. So we'll take a small break. It may be two minutes, it may be five minutes, who knows? But don't go away. You're watching Marietta Esports.
All right, and welcome back. Uh, looks like everyone's getting to the lobby. Everyone's almost ready. It's going to be on Villa. Marietta will be on defense first. So I'm just waiting for everyone to get ready for the bands. I got to make sure I have all the overlays set up. Looks like things have begun, so let's get into the game, folks. All right, so let's see what Marina will be banning first. It's looking like that they are going to go with the ace this time. So while Thatcher is pretty OP, they don't want to play against a, an ace, then they can. And it looks like we are going to have a special caster here, so let me hop into the Discord uh, while... Well, let's get through the bands first, and then we'll get in. So it looks like Florida Polytechnic will be banning the Thatcher. So, let's see what the next ban will be from Florida Polytechnic. And it's going to be the Mira ban. Now we'll see what Marietta wants to, to take out this time. Looks like it's going to be the Maluzi, which which makes sense. Very powerful, very OP, uh, especially on a map like Villa. All right, so let's get in here. Hello. Hello. While I'm sharing screen, go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone. Hello, I am uh, Vincent Anderson, also known as Nuggo. Uh, I am the captain of the Rainbow Six team, and I um, I subbed out uh, for the second map. We've been doing a lot of strats, um, particularly with the roster that you are about to see set on Villa, and we are going to see how that performs well. Um, we knew that uh, Florida was going to pick this map. It is one of their favorites, according to their map history, and we wanted to make sure that we were prepared for this map. So club was our pick, and it wasn't necessarily in our favor at the beginning because of the attacking. Um, we did manage to pull back a lot of rounds on defense with a very close final round. It was a really, really close finisher. If we had won that round, which we had a very high chance of doing so, we would have had been 5-6, and who knows, we could have gotten one more round and gotten into overtime, Secure and we would have been at an protected. advantage because we get defense and OT on club. So, um, for... For this map, we, we've set up multiple strats so that way we can just ensure that we're going to be as effective as possible. We really wanted to make sure that, um, because, because the biggest issue that we've had is because we played one time we played Michigan State, and we are going through this, we get 7 0 on Villa, but then every other map is like 7 4, 8 7, something like really like close. So we realize that this map is really knowledge heavy, yeah, strat heavy, and we need to make sure we practice that. So we have done a lot more preparing for this map, and I think we'll do a lot better than we have in previous games. All right, so the rounds are the beginning. We're going to be looking from Sitai's perspective, who's going to be on Goya for, for this one. As a reminder for everyone, because of Collegiate R6 rules, we're not going to be able to see the full spectator. We'll be swapping back and forth between uh, Sitai and Juju Cap's perspective. Yeah. Absolutely, and um, I will say, like for for this strat, it's essentially we, we do like to utilize Goyo a lot. It's the area denial he provides with his shield is very very useful, especially for time burning. When you're in the fire, you cannot go that way, and so it's really really useful to use as both a piece of cover and as well to something to finally, when you have to give up the area that you're holding, like bookshelf for instance, that Sith Jedi is holding then you can use that fire shield get some area denial even burn some extra stuff this that the twitch just did a massive thing right there she just destroyed both ads's in rapid succession that was a really good play by their twitch so now there's no nade denial for some jedi and he can get forced out of position incredibly fast now any projectile can just be thrown in there and get destroy that goyo shield and force him off of it so that was a massive play by the twitch drone right there um 
We do see as well Spoon on the smoke. He's also able to play the secondary smoke role. I'm going to be holding bar. I think that um, bookshelf's going to be a huge priority for uh, for Florida right now, just because getting control of bookshelf means that you can freely move between study and 90 and get a decent east, east push into bar, which is why the Jedi is trying to hold on to it for his life before he has to give it up with a shield. And he's lost a significant amount of time already just because of those ADSs being destroyed. However, it is a minute 20, and we still have burned a ton of time. This is still looking pretty good for Marietta. Goedo can still give up that shield. He can still break it and run away, and he still can burn tons of time. So for right now, Florida Polytechnic needs to make a move. There's only, tw there's only one minute left about, and they haven't gotten that much map control. Um, as opposed to, now I'm not sure about Master Side, they could be getting Master Side right now, but as opposed to Study, they haven't really gotten much of anything at all. This still is very heavy in Marietta's favor, and there it is. There is the destruction of the Goyo Shield, and that's what I was talking about, how you can get forced off of it incredibly easily. And now there's a massive disadvantage for HP for Goyo. So there's, so that was a, that was the whole part of the, of the ADS. It's going to be a little quick reset. Um, for Goyo, a little tax breeders that won't do that much. You'll still probably be one shot, but it's it's useful. Um, and now it's going to be just a very heavy hold. Bobby, being very effective, gets rid of uh, gets rid of Roy. Res gets a little bit of a trade refrag. So now we're still at four v four. Twenty seconds left, still heavily in Marietta's favor. And now all that needs to happen is plant denial. And we'll see exactly how that goes down. They still have a smoke on the board that's very useful. As long as the smoke can keep throwing his, he's going to be very effective. Juju gets, does get taken out. I believe that, um, and, and there's also the, the holding of the of the bar as well. Puyo does get blinded. And now we play for time. And there we go. So that's that's just a really the, the beauty of our strats is that what if, as the, the biggest thing that's happening there is that we're burning time. If you, as you can see, there's, when, the, when there's a minute left and they haven't gotten control of a certain area, then boom, like you, the defense practically default wins that round. Yeah. Very, very effective. So a common thing that we've been seeing, whether it's on offense or defense, is if you can eat out the clock and get to a point where they have 30 seconds left and they have to make a move, like they have to rush in and you can't be as tactful. You can't be as stealthy. You just have to zerg in and hope you can take out people and get to the bomb site or take out the, the rest of the team before time runs out. And that was a good example of just eating out the clock. And even though several from Marietta went down, it was enough to stall and take the, uh, the round. Absolutely. That's just exactly why being on defense is so strong because you don't have to go for anything. You just need to hold on to what you have. The Goyo sits on bookshelf, holds on to it, make sure they can't go up main, even though the Twitch drone, really good play, got rid of both ADSs, still wasn't enough to get Florida onto the site. So that was a really, really good play by being able to our strat in general, just being able to this. This is another strat that we've been playing. It's a really effective one where smoke holds closet. It's going to be incredibly useful when just burning so much time for the, the opposing team. They have to get control of closet, they have to control a master, but Smoke is able to just pop up with a shotgun, get a few easy kills, do whatever he needs to do, and he can also deny plant. So this is also very integral strat. Our strat will always re revolve around that kind of time wasting on this map because of how effective it can be. So we'll see how this goes down. I'm very, uh, I'm very excited to see how this goes. Jaeger usually is also going to be trying to make sure that Smoke isn't going to be flanked as incredibly well through bathroom window so all in all this is a still an this is going to be an incredibly winnable map for marietta we have definitely studied our strats and studied this map and we will definitely be able to take this home as you can see from the first round win on av Usually with, uh, with the attackers, they will commonly spawn around Fountain, and they'll try, and then some will also spawn near Ruins, and they will try to get control of Study and just do a little small Study push on their way to Study the Trophy, and they can get control of Master, or not Master, um, they can get control of uh, Landing, and, um, but right now it seems as though Florida is going for a Master push, trying to get burn some utility to Smoke making sure that he's getting as much time burn as possible. We're at two minutes now. Um, when you're getting at the one minute 30 mark, that is around when the attackers are going to start trying to get a bit more aggressive for map control. So if we can hold on to master until one minute, that is still a huge win for us. So right now is about when you're going to start to see a bit of the action going on. So the utility is happening right now.
And now Smoke's been forced out of this position. He's going to have to fall back straight into the master bathroom. Uh, Boba does get taken out by the Nomad. And now you see that the wall is being uh, taken out. Now a minute 30, the Yeager's trying to go in and do get a, a little bit aggressive to try and equalize that man count, trying to get a bit of an aggressive angle. You can see that Thermite's ran in. He's going to try and out the Thermite, and he almost manages to. He gets Thermite super low against the guy in the camp, and the Thermite. That's a massive play by Juju, as well as Rez being able to take out Roy. The huge play by Juju taking out that Thermite. Now there is no way to get the wall. That is incredible by Juju. This fight is will be a one round. No wall. One minute left. 4v2. I mean, you might as well have this round in the bag from area. They'll have to see if Florida can get anything off. They'll have to go insane right now. They're going to funnel through bricks. They're going to have to funnel through bathroom. They're going to have to funnel through something to try and get some kills off, which is just a huge advantage for Marietta. And there's Goku getting a nice kill on Sith Jedi. That makes the, the round a little bit more winnable. Two of the teammates for Marietta are incredibly low health with Mozzie at full health, getting it nomaded. Although 30 seconds left now for 2v2, but the frag is picked immediately back up by Sith And he also has to control the diffuser. 2v1 with control diffuser is also another advantageous situation. 20 seconds left. Now the diffuser is back in possession of Marietta. And now Rez has to play incredibly passive. And, he has, and now he sees the default plan is being baited out. Rez is going to try and push for it. He's not going to push exactly. And there is the next uh, final kill taken by Goku. That was very well played. So again, that was a huge disadvantage brought incredibly well back by Florida. Um, the great bait plant by Goku. Um, once he got that kill, the refrag onto the Capitao, he, uh, the, the the first, I think the most in, impactful kill there was the kill onto the onto the first person that turned it into 2v3. Because once that happened, um, the when it when it got to a 2v2 after that, then the the uh, the Mozzie um, or sorry the Jaeger kills the Capital, gets traded out by the Cali, and then the Cali does the bait plant, baits out Res, and then kills him. So very well played. Yeah, we cannot count out the uh, Goku. He's, he, I believe he's Florida Polytechnic's top player. And we saw why that he basically carried that round on his back. Yeah, and still, and still, that round was still incredibly close. And that's the first round that was taken. And uh, both, all of these rounds are getting to be a little bit on the closer side. As we see in the first round, it was a pretty good dominant win from Ereda, but there was a little bit of a shakiness towards the end. There were a lot of picks being utilized. So again, this second round that was lost on Marietta was incredibly close. Came down to a 1v1 with 10 seconds left. Cal and, and the bait had to be, plan had to be baited out. There was so much going on throughout that round that the round was so close. I know that that was still a really, really good effort by either team. So this is still winnable for either side. But I think Marietta is a bit of an edge right now because of the fact that the second round that was lost was a lot closer than the one that was won. So we're going with to see the a similar strat. I think it's going to be the same strat on Trophy. They know that the uh, Meriden knows they can win it. They were already able to get a 2v4. They just need to play a bit more passive. They need to figure out that if there's one situation where there's 2v4, it's okay to just sit on top of site and stick and stick with each other. So, any uh, anything else you've seen on that? Uh, I think you got everything pretty well covered. Uh, we did swap over to Sith Jai's perspective for this round just to get his take uh, onto the smoke. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that uh, for, uh, and again, just thinking about that 2v4 the last round, we will see um, the, them trying to take more of a, a laundry push for this site. Um, so Florida is going to try to utilize this sort of a different path to try and get to the OBJ. Um, and there is straight immediately from the, the bicycle push into laundry. That might be from with the way Spoon got down off the bat. That's not going to be very good for Marietta. The round was already closed as it was, and this first pick is going to throw off the energy from how effective it was last time to how it is now. Two minutes on the clock, 45 for Marietta. I'd say that if Marietta wants to win this, they're going to have to... A, the, the aggressive play by Juju the first time was really, really effective. Definitely threw off the attacker's pace. And as in terms of, and B, being able to maintain your 4v2, stick with each other. Even though it's a 4v2, two of you are incredibly low HP, trade each other out, stick next to each other, sit on top of each other practically if you have to. So, um, looks like Smoke was flashed out of closet, wasn't able to see, and now he is downed. And that's Goku going to be able to finish off 
uh, Sith Jedi. So they've gotten control of Closet, but they have a minute 18, minute 15. Rez is also taken out by Roy. It's going to be a 2v5. A ton of time remaining for Florida. In addition to uh, Boba taking out the Nomad, the Goku finishing off the way of the Astro. Now Boba's in a 1v4. And it's still very doable um, with a minute remaining. There may be some bait plants being used as well on the attacker's side. And now Boba's location was found out. Um, that's just a, 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 bit, a big tough scenario for, for Baba to be in just because um, when he kills someone, they call out his position and now he's in boar and Goku just goes straight for the kill. Very well done by Florida. Yeah, just being able to get the early frags. Utilizing the flashbangs to uh, take down Sinjai just gave him the early need. They did it. And by having that numbers advantage, then they would just go straight push in, look for the rest, and just pick everyone off. Yeah, it was a very well done strat um, by Florida. Um, and just to see that they were able to pull back that 2v4, um, Marietta knew that they got that first round went off, but it's not going to be easy throughout the rest of this. Um, they had a 2v4 advantage and they still lost the second round. So being able to make sure that once, it doesn't matter if you have an advantage, that is when you play the most sweaty. That is when you play the most passive and that's when you play the most trade for the that is when the opponents are going to try and get pick by pick by pick until now. It's a 2v2. Now they just trade people out, and now they just go for the plant, and then they win. So it's as if the more of an advantage you have, the more aggressively um, uh, aggressively passive, as you could say, you could, you, you could play. You need to make sure that you are very well utilizing the ability of the fact that you're a defender. Time is on your side. You stay alive. So that's just something they can take advantage of right now. They got Aviator back. This can be a very good round win for Marietta. That's exactly as you can see. They won Aviator pretty well first round. This, this can be easy back to two. See a very similar setup um, from Marietta. Again, the two the two ADSs, the Goyo shield. Um, Goyo's definitely gonna be watching out more for the Twitch drone this time, trying to take out the Yeager ADSs. If he can do so, then this round may even may be even more winnable than the previous time. Because in the first round they got the Yeager ADSs off off the bat immediately. So being able to hold on to those longer, they will take way longer to get control of study and control of main. So that can be a very useful position to get, especially if we can just hold on, just look at the ground a little bit, look for the Twitch drones, force them out, then boom, you get so much more utility than Nile. control uh they immediately forced jaeger off of uh that 90 hold he got rid of the glow shield and just popped it and went straight back into sight they gave up sight pretty it's it's an okay time it's minute 45 it's not the best it's not the worst time to give up it's just sort of in a scenario when usually the defenders will give it up so it's still winnable for either side no real advantage defenders. really what's going to decide the winner this is at this point um, attackers still have to follow in through these doorways, and there's two amazing picks from Mariota by Rez and Juju. Rez on the Goku, the top player they've had, and Juju on the Goku. It's going to be a massive advantage from Mariota, and Bobby with another C4. Bobby with his amazing C4s, he always manages to get the craziest ones ever. On to Draza, 5v2, Mariota knows how to hold this site, 5v1 from Sith Jedi. And Juju just goes ahead. He just, he's, gonna, he's just gonna try and find the last person he wants this kill. Minute remaining for Florida Poly. Um, I don't want to say the round's over, but it's looking pretty good for Marietta right now. The odds are definitely in Marietta's favor, that's for sure. But anything mm -hmm. can happen. He's gonna get spotted out, and Juju will get that final kill. Very well done. Um, I think Marietta just really knows how to hold this site. And it, it can be a combination of Florida being of Florida being hesitant on this site and Marietta being dominant on this site. A combination of the two. The overall, our aviator strat that we've learned definitely has been stumping them for a while. So it's a really good thing to utilize. Marietta knows we can win this. 
We've won eight a year twice now. We've lost trophy twice now. So now they're going to the dining room kitchen strat. We learned this strat just recently. And um, we will see exactly how it will be changed. So this strat we yeah, this strat we just recently learned. So what if you saying? just learned it, how well have you executed it so far? Um so this strat is really relative to a lot of rank strats that we've used previously. But before this, we had never had a real concrete strat that we were utilizing effectively. This strat is to give us more structure for Kitchen. The reason why is because Kitchen is one of the worst sites to defend, and therefore we've ignored it a lot for, for reasons that we just don't have a lot of effective time playing with it. Right? So, the smoke utilizing this top hole up here. By breaking this, the person inside of Statue, our trophy right here, can look down into Memo and contest defenders that are looking into here. As you can see, that arch that the smoke was looking up into, the mute will be playing upstairs, and that will be an effective way for them to see it down in to Memo. A very, very good utilization of an angle. So that way, if they do decide to push Memo, it is very heavily covered by the mute. Down to five seconds. These simple, um, these simple angles that are being utilized in Marietta are just a very effective way that they can hold onto the site as useful as any as most of as much of a useful way as possible. Um, and again, utilization of the Goyo, great way to burn out some some utility. Um, if the attackers try to to push up, they can pop that Goyo, damage the attackers, burn some time. And then again we have good vertical control as well. This strat is going to be where so we're seeing exactly how well it's gonna perform now on stream but we have had many days in the works trying to make sure the strat is as good as possible. We're gonna be putting it to the test. So right now we're just getting some basic intel. Not much going to be going on incredibly uh, often right now. If a pick goes down, um, it can be very, very detrimental for either team. This is probably like the worst time for a team to get picked off on. So. As, as time goes down and uh, we see more uh, ways things are diff uh, different gadgets are utilized, um, looks like laundry is not being pushed heavily right now, and it looks like a vertical play is going to be tried to be obtained right now, which is usually the uh, a strategy that most attackers take. They get vertical play, then they condense on the site. Most, uh, most attackers don't necessarily go through laundry straight into site. That's a death wish, as you can see through the Goyo shield, the smokes, the ADSs, we know how to hold that. So they try and get vertical play, pressure the defenders from above, and then try to get control that way. Now, as you can see, there's a minute 20, and there's still a 5v5, a huge advantage for the defenders right now. If they can keep going down to a minute left, there's a huge, oh, go. and there's Pantry being utilized by Goku right there. Goku with his amazing aim, takes out the smoke, probably one of the worst operators you want to die first. Um, that was a huge pick by Goku. Being able to take out the smoke means that now there's those those that 30 seconds of area now gone. So now that is a massive pick. Any almost any operator would have been a better operator to pick off. So that is, would have been would have been a better for Marietta to pick off. So now Marietta is in a huge disadvantage. 45 seconds, time is on their side, and now Bobby does manage to take out the Sophia. And now the Cali is trying to push Moto. Juju does look seem like it has to give up a bit of. Memo side. So now it's 2v4 for Marietta, 25 seconds. So good time burn. However, the picks that went off are definitely going to be disadvantageous for Marietta. 15 seconds left. Still a very small amount of time. 1v4, 10 seconds, and now the fine and now the plan execute is going down. And now many shots are being going are going off by the Jaeger, so he's going to reveal his position, and he's going to be taken out by Goku. I think the biggest factor in that round was when Sith just got taken out immediately by the Cali. That was a huge loss from Arietta, and that was just the biggest uh, the biggest deal. I think Sith Jedi he he is a really mechanically skilled player. He loves playing smoke, but a big part portion of smoke is playing passive. And um, again, he couldn't really foresee that event. He didn't. He didn't know that the 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 Cali had uh, taken out, that had gotten control of Pantry that quickly. But the Cali uh, or Goku in general is just really, really skilled with that character, and he gets incredible shots off. Um, 
with Cali. So Goku is definitely utilizing uh, his aim as much as possible and getting and, and and getting that pick onto the smoke is just an incredible way to start off the round. Yeah. So um, that was the biggest disadvantage. And just not being able to zone anyone out without without the smoke definitely played a, a factor there. Other than that, it was a great time burn. Great, excellent time burn. Uh, Boba did manage to get this over here because um, he was forced to, to, to peek from the bricks or to peek from the bathroom. She peeks from the bricks. She is at a disadvantage. And then uh, Boba takes her out. So, still a really, really good time burn for Marietta. It was just the pick on of the smoke that was a huge disadvantage. Right. Now the end going. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I, I don't even know what I was going to say. Uh, I was just going to say, look, so now it is important for Mary to take this round because next round the roles are going to swap. And as we've seen, Mary has struggled a bit on offensive. So if they can at least tie things up going into the offensive rounds, and they may have a shot of taking it. But if they give Florida Polytechnic a 4 2 lead, then it may be a little bit more difficult to, to take back. Yeah, four two attack lead is definitely a huge disadvantage um, for Marietta. Um, that is going to be one of the, the biggest issues with, with trying to go uh, four attack. Um, Marietta actually can attack uh, pretty effectively onto this map. Um, as far as I've been able to see, they are not terrible at attacking it. Um, the the biggest factor is just you still don't want to just have two rounds on defense. Trying to tie this up is going to be the biggest factor right now. Um, and Marietta has lost the site twice. However, if they're able to pull a win out of it, then it is going to be definitely a really important factor in determining the win. I'd personally say that Marietta knows how to win this. They have just been getting very unlucky with the picks they've been getting. Um, they, they've been getting in, in certain positions as well. Again, Spoon getting in. Instead of him getting picked off early, he gets a really nice pick off onto Roy, and that is going to be a great advantage for Marietta early on. Still a minute 55, a decent amount of time left, and Marietta is now at a defender's advantage. Um, a, a passive play would be a very, very good option for Marietta right now, I'm trying not to peek anything, trying to just tr stay alive. Even if something seems tempting to pick, you might just want to stay away from it. You want to be able to utilize as much of the map as possible, burn as much time as possible. Looks like Astro is going to be pushed by Florida Polytechnic, trying to get some sort of use out of it. However, there are three barbed wires on that Astro stairs, so you're not going to be able to push up that without making a ton of racket. So we'll see exactly how effective this is utilized by Florida. Smoke still holding on to uh, to, map, to to closet. I believe he rotated out and gave it up. There's still a minute 12 left, so that's not a terrible loss. Barricading off uh, Master Bathroom, a little bit of a risky play, but it also gives off a huge benefit. Um, now they do not need to worry about someone straight up walking in through Master Bathroom. Spoon getting another pick on to Nyan Orange. That's a huge advantage for Marietta. Still 5v3, 53 seconds. Goku getting his picks as usual straight on to Bobby. We have to remember Goku is going to be a huge factor in bringing this back. Marietta did have a 4 2 advantage and still lost it. As long as, Goyos, as, long as Goku's still on the board, this the, anything can happen. So um, it might not even be a good idea to peek anything when you're going against uh, when you're going against Goku. Um, three seconds left. A four three advantage. Not a massive advantage. One pick on Marietta, and then it's back to a three v three. Um, the biggest thing is going to be just trying to stay alive. Twenty seconds left. Four v three advantage. Still can go either way in my opinion, as long as Goku's on the board. Fifteen seconds. And, and Juju's dancing with the devil right now, trying to see if he's going to be able to take out Goku. And there it is, there's the two picks. And Goku is being taken out. And now the default plan is going down. Nice. Just uh, just wonderful. As soon as Goku went down, I said, okay, Marion has got this. Goku has been an incredible factor for being able to get so many kills, take out so many people. Marietta manages to get the plant stopped and they managed to win the round. And that's all they needed. Now it's 3-3. Now this is still incredibly doable for Marietta. It is very doable to bring this to a third map. And now the attack strats are going to commence and we will see how effectively Marietta can take on this next side. Bringing a BB as it seems, very interesting. BB probably isn't gonna be used that much uh, in the next season. He is getting nerfed in incredible amounts. Um, let's say he's sixing off of the BB, but um, Blackbeard's shield is getting nerfed. His shield's health is getting nerfed to 20 health, so it's basically going to take like one bullet from almost any gun in the game to break it. So 
probably not going to be any and his uh his his uh his scar was was nerfed incredibly as well so his guns damage is nerfed shields nerfed um just just really 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 huge nerf you, you probably won't see him in, in the future seasons the comp we have now is pretty interesting now so let's talk um, about offensive stuff because i know like it's harder to play on offense than on defense of course uh, we've seen Meredith struggle quite a bit on offense. So what do they need to do here to try to get this to a map 30? So with offense, necessarily, it's obviously not as easy as defense because the defense, you are very ad adaptive. You wait for the, for the uh, offensive team to try and get past your defense, and then you counter it accordingly. When you're offense, you are the ones that need to be proactive. You are the ones that do the push. You are the ones that get the picks. The, the advantage of offense is that you do not have time. Your time is not on your side. You have to plant. The advantage is you have better guns, you have better attachments, you have better gadgets. You have better stuff to clear out the defenders. The issue is, is that you're the one that you still have to clear them out. So utilizing utility is incredibly important in this scenario. The IQ is incredibly useful for clearing out roamers. She can detect a visual or pulse. She can get rid of anything that, in, that has to do with electric traps. She is going to be very useful. Most likely in this scenario, she's going to be used to get rid of the Kai charge below inside the aviator. Um, in terms of the sledge, his nades are going to be very important, uh, or his sledge hammer itself is going to be very important for getting rid of the maestro cams. The nomad is going to be incredibly important for setting up flanks, making sure that they cannot get flanked on. Now, um, I will say Florida is a very is a much more passive team than we've seen. They are not very heavy on roaming. They're not very heavy on making these super huge cross map plays where they run around rotating throughout the entire map and get this massive flank. They're not really into that as a defensive team. On defense, they tend to really hold onto the site and not try and go for insane plays. They do have a tendency to get a little bit of a spawn peak. They do have a tendency to get a little aggressive here and there. As you can see, there's a spawn peak from Goku. That might have been from the ruins window, uh, the, the window in the trophy going out of ruins. And there's a second one from Goku on a Juju. I think Juju tried to re-peak that, but Goku just went straight back into it. Again, very well done by Goku. Uh, that's going to be um, a very huge disadvantage for Marietta. They have they've lost both their entries. And now they're going to be after going in. They're going to be going in this round less than a minute thirty, with no way to sort of entry into the site. They still have a lot of utility, but no way to get onto um, the actual objective. The thermite and Havana may be rendered useless without being able to get rid of the Kai charge. Assuming they still have a Kai, I'm not sure if Kai was banned. I don't believe he was. And there is the Valkyrie being taken out. Now it's back to a four v three. Um, still a minute left. There's Goku on the red stairs getting a really good pick. Potentially an ace for Goku as well. He does take the final one out. And luckily, the ace was stopped by Rez, who is now in a 1v3. The Goku did get a massive 4k. Very, very well done. 45 seconds left. Uh, Rez still can clutch this. And it is still a huge possibility. However, at the same time, um, he still has to be to entry in the site, get rid of three different people within 30 seconds. And, um, and, and he, he has to be the person that's the most aggressive right now. And um, playing passive, he's trying to get, he's trying to bait out anyone running out of sight, but it's just not going to be something that happens. Typically, when you're in this situation, you just have to just go in. You just have to go, you just have to try, and you just have to get anything you can. Um, there's a nice little pick by uh, Rez onto the, onto the Maestro, and now he's going to have to try and enter into sight. And there is a C4 placed by Ambrose. Again, Rez was at a disadvantage, couldn't necessarily just get into there. Um, and there is the the C4 pre-placed, being able to take him out. So again, it wasn't necessarily expected that Rez could finish off that round. However, it was down to a 1v2, I believe. So um, still still high potential um, for Mary to bring this back. That was their first attacking round, and it wasn't as insane of a disadvantage as it would have been a 1v5. It just came so, down to Goku having a very strong round with that 4K that made all the difference. Mm -hmm. If Goku had not have gotten those first initial picks, I'd say Marietta would have been at a much better position, potentially could have taken that round, because they got all those picks and they got all that map control with no entries, no entry frags. They had no sledge, they had no IQ, no one to get the wall, and they were still able to get so many picks off. And now uh, Marietta is going with a more uh, more of a, a an older comp, I'd say. It, it was more common. Uh, the Ash Sophia is utilized a lot. 
thermite for the wall, sledge for just getting, uh, I think the sledge could have been replaced by an IQ or potentially a Cali. They're going to be going to Trophy now, I believe, for the second map, or for the second site. And um, I think getting the wall is going to be a bit of a difficult issue. The Ash can Ash below, but she will, but that doesn't guarantee that she will necessarily get the Kai'i charge. So we'll have to see exactly how Marietta will clear out this wall and how they will get onto site. Um, this could be, we could see a huge study push where they get, um, they spawn ruins and they go to study and then they go, just go, they take study control, they take aviator control, then they go all the way to trophy through landing, and then they try and get uh, onto site through that while some of the teammates are also pushing through, uh, through mastery. So that is solely going to be something that can be utilized. And again, you know, um, Merida is at a disadvantage in terms of the rounds, but only the first attacking round has been played. As in terms of the defender's round, it was 3-3, so this is still a very high potential um, area to that. There's just going to be some massive entry plays in the mid and uh, Goku needs to, they need to be wary of Goku, essentially. Goku has been a massive presence um, in, in the game currently. Uh, being able to get so many picks so early on. So now there's going to be it looks like it's going to be a massive slim push. Uh, looks like there's multiple all the entire team shooting the study. And um, I'd say that uh, if they're going to get control of study, um, the uh, reflecting back onto the push um, on how uh, Florida is going to adapt to it. Now Florida might be able to just adapt to their players to get ready for them to push through um, study. So we see Intel being gained. We see potentially someone playing an aviator. Um, and now we're able to get mining control, and now we have uh, aviator control, as you can see by the sledge, and most likely we'll have mining control, and now we're getting a little bit more map control uh, near near the site. So um, this is still being good by Marietta. We still have a minute thirty, so it's still a lot of potential um, for being able to finish out this round. Um, the sledge doesn't want to shoot that ADS yet, as you can see, he's being uh, very diligent about that. He wants to make sure that. Um, and um, so he takes it out on his way out, says he knows he's not going to be in trouble from that situation. Bobby with a massive pick onto Ambrose, a minute left and a 5 4 advantage. Still a lot of potential for Marietta. Sledge rotates on the Master to put some pressure on from this side. And again, someone could very easily be holding the long angle onto this window for Sledge. If he hops in, he could be dead immediately from the left side, which is why he's asking for someone to drone it out for him. They're going to be droning to see if someone's holding inside of Trophy, and they're holding a super long angle into Master. Looks like there's a there. Actually, there's a one there. You can't get rid of him. There's the, there's the next kill. So next, there's going to be a utilized by the Sledge. is going to try and get rid of the Kaiju charge. And he does so. So now Waller can be go can be gotten. And there's Goku getting a kill on the red. So a ton of potential 3v1 in hands. And now Diffuser is now planted. And now the last person is Goku, who could still very well bring this around. But Sith Jedi sends the final kill into the round and finishes it up. And we're going back to be tied for a four. A very, very close game for Marietta and for Really exciting. Oh yeah, I mean it's four apiece. This is this is this is something. You know, us being able to take so many, so many defensive rounds, as opposed to previous games where you would take like one or none. This has been a huge advantage for Marietta, being able to hold their own and not allowing six wins for Florida. So. And it sounds like the team's enjoying themselves, so. Still a good win, potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just need three more rounds, but they can get very interesting. Because if they, hopefully they can take these next three, then we just go straight to about three. Those are may get into overtime procedures. Marietta will be at a disadvantage if, if they go into overtime, though. Reasoning for this is because since Florida chose this map, they also get to choose the side in overtime. And because of that, Florida gets to be on defense in OT. So Marietta will have to attack twice in total if they go win, loss, win. It will go Marietta attacking in OT, then 
switches to Myriad defending an OT, and then switches back to Myriad attacking an OT. That was one of the rule changes with the latest season. It used to be that the side selection was random in overtime, but I guess now mm -hmm. they changed it to teams can decide depending on map pick bans. Yeah, that was in accordance with uh, with one of uh, the Pro League settings. This, that was a setting used in Pro League a lot, and so they just unified that with the Collegiate Arts set. Which makes sense, just to, to have all the... Uh, it's, it's nice when the Collegiate rules are in line with professional league rules, just that way there isn't any confusion. Yeah. And it's pretty nice, too, because now you get some sort of advantage when you're on the map you pick. And, um... You get to be on the side you want, so... We'll see exactly how this plays out. And Goku gets another massive pick from the uh, from the uh, master window. Goku gets tons of picks from there, and um, he doesn't get rid of the Ash, who is trying to defend herself and trying to free fire. And just, just completely ends her. Draws are getting the pick straight on to Juju. And that's three of that two of the three entries Marietta has lost. So. We'll see exactly how they can bring this back. Uh, there's been a back and forth sort of nature to how the rounds have been going. And um, Marietta has to worry about the red stairs in which um, Spoon died from. Or not Spoon, the uh, uh, Juju. And uh, just retaining map control right now is a huge factor. Still winnable, but a lot of picks need to be made. They do have an echo being a very, very important factor in stopping the plants uh, in case the Sophia does have somehow get map control. Echo can just straight up stop it. The Legion mine, which it looks like the Legion actually is below now near Memo throwing his mines. Um, as you can see, that mine go off. So the Legion has lower control. Echo and Kate are most likely near Sight or Astro. Um, a massive flank could be done right now onto Marietta. And we can see the Kade pushing out a little bit onto Bricks, and there is the Jaeger who is pushing up slowly onto, um, onto Main. A flank could be done by the Jaeger um, from 90, which Ryze is waiting for. And he could be uh, stopping the Jaeger from there. He is contesting and doing so. He's going to try and get a final kill onto the Jaeger, but he gets taken out by Draza. And that's going to finish off the ninth round, and now it's 4 5. In favor of Florida Polytechnic. Just getting those early frags and just able to snowball from there. As you mm -hmm. mentioned, when two of Marietta's entries are, are taken out, it is just hard to be able to infiltrate yes. from that point. Yeah, it's a, a big factor is that the end, when usually when the entries get taken out, they get traded. So say um, the Sophia kills the Sophia gets killed, the Nomad or the Ash would refrag that Sophia. And since the entries are getting killed immediately, the uh the the other support and flex players can't refrag because they're not in the same position and then the defending team gets to relocate themselves and get into a better position and now it's just a true 5v3 Need to so, use your drone to a bomb. refrags are also not being utilized as effectively as they could be so now marietta has gotten at least four rounds on each map and let's see if they can break uh that record and go to five rounds onto uh Villa. and if they can eventually win these next three and finish off this map which is still well, which is still doable um the the biggest factor now is i believe they're going to be holding av um for uh for florida so now marion needs to make a strategy trying to figure out exactly how they're going to um take hold of the site it looks like they're also going to be using a warden which is really interesting i would not have expected a warden pick from them Especially considering that they haven't had a uh, Marietta hasn't had a, really a smoke heavy or a flash heavy team, which is all that Warden does essentially. Um, Goku has been getting an insane amount of frags off of. Uh, it, so it, I'm not exactly sure if it is Goku that is playing the Warden. Um, it could also have been the Valkyrie. Um, but very interesting pick. Um, they might have been picking this just to anticipate a smoke plant or anticipate someone flashing out someone else. Um, Necessarily one in art studio, but the IQ tries to tries to find some way in order to contest this point. Um, the Ash also trying to give a little bit of extra help uh, to the IQ, but um, 
taken out by the Mike also holding far back into main. And the ward holding piano. There's a massive here. And the Leicester cannot get refragged. And now Spoon is in a huge disadvantage, being basically a 2v1 against this warden, who is going to really hold on to piano and try and make sure that Spoon or that uh, Juju uh, cannot get in to exact to, to art studio at all. So it looks like yes, the site actually is aviator, so um still potentially winnable. The biggest factor here is that the mayor is going to be yeah, Juju's playing. Okay. So Goku's dead. So Goku was playing the warden. And now the Maestro is going to be below. As you can see, we saw below or we saw previously. Or maybe the Maestro was sitting main stairs, we're not sure. So now it is time for Juju to switch the shine. Now he is going to try and get rid of the uh Jammer below. So um, this is the biggest uh, factor for um, Juju right now. He needs to be able. Um, he needs to be able to get the. So it looks like there was a disconnect on uh, on Florida side, which they can't necessarily. Um, they can't call a rehost and win the round, so they have to just play with what they have. Uh, I would say that uh, the big is. Um, is that well the yeah, once they can get rid of these new jammers um she can get rid of uh, a lot of different utilities being able to do this so um 43 seconds still a 4v3 iq has done her job she's gotten rid of the utility below and now she just needs to push up main she needs to get some site control and then she can just get control of study get control of uh 90 if she wants to and just finally execute on the site and there's a maestro holding the uh, the vault door, which is taken out, and now it is a 4v1 on the mute, 20 seconds left. And there's a plank going down as well. And then mute is a 90, who was taken out by Juju. Very well done. To be fair, probably, the disconnect probably didn't help either, but taking out uh, Goku early was a, a major factor with that. So it probably will be doing a rehost here to give... Uh, it may be a... Um, they, they, I think you can... You can um, you can rejoin uh, mid game, so you probably don't have to. Yeah. Can they do a pause? Yeah, they can. Whoever is the owner of the lobby pauses timer. There we go. All right, timer's paused. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the, all the lobby ownership went to Boba, and Boba like never hosts the lobby, so he he's kind of new to to, uh, to to having control over when to pause the timer. So, um, yeah, he's Boba. Yeah, they, Boba okay, but really they got cool. it. They, they got it with four <laughs> seconds, but uh, they were able to get the the pause in. But yeah, um, five five. Marriott has gotten more rounds, um, so Marriott knows that on this uh, that that on this map that um, just a very very good way uh for them to to stay can stay in control of this is just being able to stay calm. The uh the push on the aviator was really strong, even with the person that disconnected, it would have been a two v four, um, which is still a huge favor in terms of Marietta. And the IQ was not being contested at all below, um, which allowed her to get a ton of value out of the mute jammers and a ton of value out of being able to take those out. The IQ has been super strong in not only getting picks with her G8, but also being able to just get rid of gadgets. And the Thermite in, and Hibana are heavily assisted by that because now they can get rid of the walls on Vault. They can get rid of walls in their study. They can get rid of anything they want to as long as that IQ takes everything out from below. And the Nomad, being played by Rez, is going to be really important as well because she brings so much default value to the team, so that way they cannot get flanked as easily. And Spoon on the Ash for extra utility for being able to destroy anything from Maestro cams to shields, etc. So this comp doesn't seem too bad. Um, I would say that uh, for the most part, um, as, as soon as, um, as, soon as uh, Florida's uh, fifth player reconnects, um, I'd say that, uh, hmm. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of how, so Mary just won Aviator and this is the, this is going to be the, uh, second to last, uh, round in the, yeah, I, I actually wait, um, yeah, second to last round in the half. So this could go either way with Marietta winning the next two attacks or Marietta losing one, winning one, and going into OT, to which they will be at a slight disadvantage because of the attack. Or they can, or they obviously could lose going 7-5. So, uh, what, what, so what would you think would be a, a good move for Marietta to make right now? 
Well, obviously you get the the way. I mean, what they've been doing for the most part is working. It just comes down to the early picks. That, that early seems to be it. If Marity gets picked off early, then Florida Polytechnic has been taking the rounds. So if Marietta can at least hold, I'm not saying they need to get the early picks, but they just have to make sure they don't get picked off early, then they can slowly work their way in and be able to take it. We see, yeah, as we mentioned, Juju Tap is on the IQ, which was a pretty big factor in the last game, taking out uh, Mute's Jammers. So I think as long as he can stay up and be able to do that same role, then they're going to be in good shape. Uh, we also got word that apparently Florida Polytechnic's player, they didn't disconnect. It forced an update, which forced the, uh, the Windows update forced a reboot. So he should be getting back on any minute now. But that was mm -hmm. one, you, got, you got to love those uh, uh, optional Windows updates. I, I say that yeah. in quotes. But yeah, I, I think it just comes down to making sure we don't get early picks. And that means they have to respect Goku. He... He's the one that's been getting those early picks, so they they either need to take him out early or make sure he doesn't take them out early. Yeah, you could see from from the Ash, she was trying to contest the Kaid. Goku was playing on Master Window. She peeks him. She thinks, "Oh, he's so far away. I'm pre-firing into this window. There's no way I'm not going to hit him, or he's not going to get scared." Goku didn't get scared. He kept peeking the window and just domed her. Like it's just it. it, it Goku is really confident in his aim. And he just lands and he just lands his shots on the head. So um Goku is just a very confident player and he and without him, um, I think Florida would be at a much larger disadvantage right now. I'd say that uh that that Goku has been again, he was the determining factor for winning the second defense, um for for, for winning the second offense for for Florida Polytechnic um when Marion was defending trophy. Marion Marion was at a four two advantage. And they just lost it because Goku was able to get that plant down, bait it out, and then get the the maestro in order to um, uh, and, and get the maestro after baiting. So um, again, just a uh, uh, just a huge thing. Um, I think bait planning is also a bit of a kryptonite for some of the players. Um, a, a huge thing, a huge rule that I have is that if someone's bait planning, I wait until the timer is getting super low. Um, normally, if there's like 15 seconds left and they're planning, I don't push, which is which is surprising. He's like, "Oh, why would you not push?" Because I guarantee that um, the opponent's gonna pop off of that plant and peek you. That's what they like to do. Essentially, what the opponent will try is that they know that you have to get, stop their plant, so they necessarily will just try and bait it out and try and peek you. If worst comes to worst, I would say that um, even if you have to, you can let them plant because you know exactly where they are. When you're in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, you can let them plant. Let them get control of that OBJ, and instead of playing aggressive, trying to stop the plant, you don't lose when the plant goes down. It just means that you now have to push. So letting them plant and having to play that game rather than giving into the bait is is a better option. So so it's it, it would be better to play passive and let them plant and take the fight that way rather than try and give into the bait. So that's just a huge factor um, when it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. They're rare. Um, but they do happen, and it happened with Goku, who has tons of experience in those scenarios where he's one on one, and he needs to be able to get the opponent to come to him, and it's with that plan that he does so. So, um, yeah, I'd say that uh, for the most part, uh, Meredith still can bring this back again. Five five, they they keep. Uh, they keep bringing back rounds one for one. Um, I would say that's uh, a big thing that Mary needs to worry about, obviously, is, is Goku getting those picks, as you said previously. If every single time Goku has been able to get something off or at least stay alive, Marietta just loses. It's just being a huge, huge issue for them. Um, so, yeah, I mean... We're just waiting I, for the for the last person to reconnect. And it should have been looking at by now, so we're not so sure what is causing the delay. It was a Windows update restart. Unless that Windows update's actually taken a while to install. That's what sometimes happens with me. Sometimes I have that issue. Like a like I'll my computer will just restart and it just it just takes forever. So um So yeah, it's alright though. It's uh it happens to everybody. Yeah. So Yeah, just the other day we had our League of Legends match and we had a player who was 
Uh, the computer was not working. It was kicking her off the, the screen. So oh, wow. and it disconnecting. Okay. We tried to have her log into a different computer in the eSports room. Discord was acting up because of um oh what because of the uh oh what what was the we use the uh oh, I can't remember what what I call it what, what's the auto software that we use now voice meter banana that's what it is voice meter banana was not was acting up but then the bigger issue is she wasn't able to reconnect to the game it's like she has to reconnect on the same computer in the middle of a custom game because otherwise the, the game won't let her connect to another computer for whatever reason. So it took us like about 10 minutes just to get everything started. And we have to give a shout out to Mount Union for being uh, very understanding uh, during all that. So we can, just, we can return the favor here with Fuller Polytechnic with just trying to, to reconnect. Yeah, I'd say that... Um... Again, I think so. If Marion had just won AB, um, Florida could go back to AB a second time. Um, this might be midway through. I believe uh, Florida just won trophy uh, previously. Or actually, no, I believe. Yeah. So, so this potentially will just be another AB push, which is why. Um, Mary is still very could win it, very well could win it. Um, I think that the disconnect, though, was a, was a bit of a helping factor for Marietta in the previous round. But again, like I said, Marietta still had a huge advantage. And Goku was taken out. He was taken out really early. The IQ found him um, out next to main, next to the couch, uh, towards red, red 90. And the IQ got rid of him. So, like, if, if such picks like this can happen more often, or if this, if a pick, I, I mean, I'd even go so far as to say, uh, next round, if that, if a pick like that happens again, like Marietta might as well take it, um, because of, of of Goku being and and we I've also seen Goku stream. Um, Goku also uh, is a, is a huge uh, oh. Wait wait wait! Uh, why, why did unpause? Oh, Bobby's for some reason unpaused it. Uh, we might need to try to rehost because he's not back yet. I, I think know, Bobby's AFK. Did it, auto, be AFK. it auto unpaused, maybe? Hey, they're rehosting. They're rehosting. Yeah, we'll just just we'll, yeah, we'll just do a rehost. Yeah, yeah. it, it might have been like the pause. It might be a setting where the pilots can only last a certain amount of time. So that's that's my guess. Oh, actually. Since okay, so technically speaking, um, I could uh, I could set up this lobby, and I technically could um, I technically could host this from spectators' view. Well, um, because because I'm not in the same building as them. Because oh, DP's at home right now. That's okay. Just have them. Uh, it's all right. We don't need to worry about trying to do uh, a spectator view for us. We'll just just get them set up with the lobby. Um, and I'll, I'll do a couple of quick announcements while they're getting that set up. So if you need to go down there and help them get the lobby set up, go for it. And he's already gone. Okay, so while we're waiting for the, the Rios, we apologize for the Legos, uh, folks. Just a reminder, just the Windows update was taking its good old time and it looks like the game auto unpaused. Uh, so while we're waiting for that, a um, couple of quick reminders. So once again, we do have our team store up. Uh, so if you are looking to get your own esports swag, whether it's t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, we have men's and women's shirts, we have navy blue, we have white, we have gray, we have backpacks, we have hats, we have these awesome hoodies. I mean, look look at this right here. Look at that gray hoodie. You got a gray version of that and a blue version with the, the white left sleeve there. It is so sick. I ordered one of those. I thought that was so great. And then we have variations of our esports logo. So you can get all that. And the, the prices are very affordable. Like they're about maybe 20, 30 bucks a piece. Like you go to a store, you're probably gonna get the same thing for like maybe 40 to 60 bucks for these things. You just gotta pay the, the shipping, which the shipping's not that great, but I mean, it is what it is. 
So you can go to bit.ly slash MCBSN2021, the MCBSN are capitalized. You can also get your very own custom Marietta College eSports jersey. That's right. So now you, you, your friends, and your family can all be sporting these awesome jerseys. We got the Pio head in the front there with the stripes. And on the back, you can put whatever name you want back there. So if you have your own gamer tag, you can put that. If you want to put your actual name back there, you can do that too. But that is a separate store. You have to go to bit.ly slash mcjersey2021. Um, and with all the sales, whether it's a jersey or a shirt, a portion of each sale will go back into uh, the esports program. But here's the thing, folks. The store closes at the end of Monday. So if you are watching this live right now on Twitch, you have two days after today to be able to get your orders in. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm sorry, the, the window of opportunity has passed. Uh, so you'll have to wait until next year when we get our store uh, up and running again. So order now, uh, or you're going to have to wait a year to be able to uh, get back in there. Uh, also, as a reminder, we are always recruiting for our esports program. Make sure I get the right image up here. The tryout date is out of date, but that's okay. So if you're a high school senior, uh, we are always looking for players for our League of Legends, Overwatch, Rainbow Six, and Rocket League teams. It is a three-step process, just three easy steps. Step number one, you go to bit.ly slash MC recruit. The MC are, are capitalized, and this is a non-committal form that says, hey, this seems cool. I want to find out more about your program. Uh, and then step number two is you fill out a, uh, you apply for admission. So you go to marietta.edu slash apply. Uh, and then, yeah, marietta.edu slash apply, fill out the application. And then finally, schedule a tryout so by going to bit.ly slash mcesport tryouts. Uh, we do have some in-person in tryouts scheduled for later on this month. I believe I'd have to double check the date on that. But I believe it will be on March 27th, uh, the same day as our uh, Navy Blue and White Day at Marietta College. So this is a great chance to come to the campus, check out the campus, come to our esports facility, and try out for an esports scholarship. Uh, we will also have another tryout date, I believe April 10th, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that will be done online through our Discord server. So you can join us at bit.ly slash pio discord, P and D are capitalized. Um, but you can join us through there and do a tryout for a scholarship. But time is running out. I mean, the semester is going to be done in a little over a month. So if you wait until like the summer to say, hey, I'm thinking about coming to, e coming to Marriott College for esports, we might say, sorry, we don't have any uh, scholarships remaining because you took too long. So you definitely want to do that sooner rather than later. Now, can you try out for a scholarship before applying for admission? Yes, you can. However, you cannot receive uh, an award until you've been accepted for admission. So the QR codes are up on here. Uh, so definitely check that out. I'm uh, still waiting for... Uh, so we're trying to create the lobby and it's, it's taking a little bit of time. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a small break uh, and then we'll be back in just a little bit with the continuation of game two. So uh, don't go away, folks. We'll be back in a few minutes.
All right, welcome back. Uh, apologize for the delay, folks. We're just getting everything back in here. Give me a second to get NDI here. All right, hold on here, video. I'm trying to get the stream back up and running for everyone. Uh, let's see here. Let's just do it this way. Let's just press that button. But okay, that's not the right button. Hold on. There we go. Now everyone should be able to see. But yeah, just we went over the uh, the lobby settings and the match history and all that to make sure everything was good to go. So we should be fine now. All right. All right, I'm back. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah. We we just had to get all the match history set to make sure it was five five and the right settings for overtime and this and that and which route, which area they can and can't plant, but okay, it's all good. Which kind of cut down to the wire because I guess after 30 minutes, they would either have to play a score or forfeit the map. So I think I got pretty close to that 30 minute mark. Yeah, I got really close, but they got all in. So after that, it was just us trying to figure it out. All right, we do appreciate everyone's patience. I mean, technical difficulties happen. I mean, sometimes, mm -hmm. Yeah, your computer kicks you off. Sometimes it doesn't update and takes almost a half hour to re to reinstall and reboot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's some time for for Marion to reflect on stuff as well, and uh, and uh, we'll we'll see exactly how um, Marion can attack this site now. Um, looks like they'll be going. I know they can't go trophy. That's what we that's what we figured out. So they they have to go AV. So attacking AV has been sort of a. Uh, I know Florida's won AV. They've lost AV. Um, we're just gonna see how Marriott is gonna change this around. What new plays they've got planned. I mean, I think that it's definitely a good possibility that Marriott has learned a lot from how uh, Florida has played. That they're definitely going to be able to pull out the win if uh, pinching opponents is going to be a good priority. Um, I'd say that Marriott uh, knows that the the warden was playing a bit aggressive on the on that round on AV. Uh, previously, however, IQ was taking control of Art Studio pretty effectively as well as she's about to take Piano. And now she has a good spot. As you can see, looks like uh, Florida's actually trying to. Looks like they got rid of a Goya shield, actually. Look, that, that was a Goya shield that was broken right there. Uh, Bobby does get taken out uh, pretty uh, quickly. Uh, and IQ tries to get a pick on the person that's sitting behind the shield. Looks like that was probably an accidental uh, shot onto uh, the Goya shield. The, the mute does uh, take out uh, Juju, and that's going to be a huge disadvantage for Marietta. Um, that's going to be um, very difficult that they come back through. They still have a hard breach, and they still have um, a few of their tools at their disposal. They just lost their uh, their IQ, which is going to be really difficult for them to be getting on the site. Um, this is what we were talking about uh, before we, we went on break, that if Marietta loses a couple people early on the round, it's going to be very difficult for them to get back into it. So they've already lost their Breacher and their IQ. So if he, unless Marietta is able to kind of maneuver the way around, it's looking like Florida probably that will take this round. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a minute 13 left, and there's another pick on a spoon. This is looking worse and worse for Marietta as time goes on. Goku just getting so many kills onto Marietta 2 now, I believe, excluding the Mute. So that is going to be a massive disadvantage. There's gonna the nomad's still gonna be useful for getting uh, for stopping flanks, which could be something that um, Florida tries to do in this time of potential regression. Um, and I'd also say that from what I can see, um, getting 90 controls would be really potent there as well. If Havana can opening on the wall, 43 seconds left. We're going to see exactly how any sort of pick can be taken out. Res tries to get something off, but it's just difficult of a gunfight for him to be in when he, there's someone also red. and there's the Havana finishing off Draza who's rotating back on under red so now there's going to be a better situation for the, the smoke from um, the smoke player inside of uh, other players also going to try and force them out using all three he's just going to time his smoke properly just wait for Marietta to try and uh, get their way into sight is going to get a refrag on is actually going to be able to try and get a refrag on some as I said before, sorry, but um, just too many people to take out, uh, so you just couldn't finish them off. Um, there were there were a lot of kills that were being utilized at the end, but it's just, you know, at some point, like, there's just too many, too many people to take out. 
uh, too many difficulties um, to worry about. So um, not terrible. Now, um, uh, Florida cannot go trophy or AV. Um, so they have to go into uh, dining or kitchen. Um, so that's going to be like the final uh, determining factor there. Um, because they've won both trophy and they've won both AV. Yeah, this is match point though for Florida. So if they yeah, do so take for, this, yeah. and they will not only take the spot, but they will take the entire series. So we'll see if Marietta mm -hmm. can at least get it into overtime. So yeah, Florida does have to go into either dining or 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 living. They cannot go into trophy. So we will see um, how they will utilize this strategy. Um, I think that. Uh, the, the most unconventional sites are living and dining, so it might so it is going to be easier for Marietta to take this, but the vertical play is going to be a huge part of making sure that um, Marietta can do so. So Marietta is going to try and gain a little bit of the intel at the beginning, maybe save some drones, maybe pre-place some drones, get some more uh, intel onto the site. And um, there's a nice little pre-placed drone um, by Ash going into uh, looking on the bookshelf. That's a really useful way to gain some intel on defenders that are trying to rotate around or trying to hold on to main. So, oh, actually, they're not allowed to go trophy. Um, they should not. I think they're going trophy. I don't think they're allowed to. So it might have been a setting with the rehost when they, when they set that up. Hold on. I will check the Discord. You found a bomb. Make your way to its location and defuse it. I thought we set it up that it would that the trophy was. Yeah, I thought trophy was one. No, that's my bad. I thought they weren't allowed to get a trophy. Oh, I know. We, we won trophy though, so they they should be able to repick it. Oh no, I thought I thought okay, I thought we lost trophy. No, oh. no, we that last round wasn't trophy, right? Because the, the reason we we won that. I thought that was aviator. My bad. Okay. I thought we won aviator, then they went to aviator again. Maybe they did. Or maybe, or wait, are they like? Well, I guess, would that open up? Would that open up trophy though? If they if they played Aviator twice, I might have I might have my memory around wrong. That's my bad. I don't know. At this point, I'm, I, with all these considered, I think it's okay to let that let it go. Yeah, I, th I think I think that might have been my mistake on that. I think um, my memory wasn't doing so good. We do have like there have been so many rounds that have gone past. They only remember like the first three, and then past that, it's a little more blurry. Yeah, we're seeing Juju. Um, Juju gets picked off early on, which is not what Marietta needs right now. And we, yeah, that is going to be an entry taken out, so it's not a crucial attacker. Um, luckily, uh, Boba Flex has not been taken out. The, the Thermite are really an integral part of the strategy. It's an entry who is expected to be taken out at certain points, so it's all right at this necessary area, but a pick does need to be taken a minute 30. Now, past the halfway point, Marietta does need to be able to... Um, to go through uh to go through this area so at this point i'd say marietta is at a um at a bit of an advantage um in being able to get so much map control already but they do all they're also at a disadvantage in terms of picks so uh, so a kill needs to happen pretty soon if they want to be able to bring themselves back into the game a 4v4 with a minute left is just way more advantageous than a 4v5 with a minute left um yeah it doesn't also help that the Zofia is extremely low in health and we just see that uh, yeah. it ends up falling, so does Red. So now it's 2v1, but technically it's just a Sophia with less than 25 health. And we do see, yeah, that's going to be 1v4 with very low HP Sophia. And, um, yeah, so I would say that uh, for, for the most part on that site, um, Again, just very well done by FPU. That's going to be a good win for FPU on that side. Not a terrible um, round differential um, for that part. Um, but other than that, um, really strong performance by FPU, but really close from area. That was a 5-7 loss, and it was a 4-7 loss as well on on, uh, on club. So um, again, very well done by, by either team. So um, yeah, I'd say that uh, it, was a, it was a really good uh, it was a really good uh, performance by Marietta, yeah. especially with how everything was utilized. Just a really, really good way that it was played. So, good, great job by both teams. Yeah, it's just unfortunately, Marietta came up a little bit short. I mean, uh, I have to give props to uh, to Goku again, just how well he played in both games. And he, he was definitely the MVP uh, for uh, Florida Polytechnic with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so that's going to be it for us today. Um,
So as far as the schedule for next week, uh, I think the GLC is going to be taking a week off to prepare for the playoffs. But I do believe there's at least one more regular season collegiate R6 match, if I remember correctly. There are actually two. There's two more. So two more. I thought um, there were only six. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. There's one more. There's one more. Yeah, this okay. is round five, week more. five. So you have one more. So there'll be one more next week. And then we have to see where things fall in place for the playoffs. I mean, although with yeah. this loss, that might might be out of contention for that because now you'll be at uh, two and three. So so I don't because, know if three yeah. and three is going to be enough to get in, but we'll have to see how I'd that goes. I'd say there's still potential for it. The good news is, is that we did not have a terrible round differential here. Since we have a good round differential, it wasn't like a 7-2 or 7-1. If we can do really well in the final match, we could still make it to playoffs. So there is some potential for us in terms of that. We just need to do really well in the final match. So there's a potential potential, I believe, we can get to play. So we have to be in the top half of the teams. But otherwise, very good performance. All right. So everyone, chat. Thank uh, Nuggo for helping with commentating that uh, second game. No uh, so I think we'll go ahead and call it here for tonight. Uh, so thank you all for watching. As always, for the latest updates with what's going on with Marriott Esports, especially anything that comes up with playoffs or additional tournaments, please be sure to give that follow on Twitter at Marriott Esports, Facebook.com slash Marriott Esports, Instagram.com slash Marriott Esports, and also hit that follow button on our on our Twitch. That way, when we do go live, you are aware of it and you can come check it out. But yeah, thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.